sûr qu'on s'assoit. Steffi, you were talking about being Bavarian. <laughs> you see that uh, uh, Romain has not resisted. He is doing everything he can in order to convince the German that he can be a little bit German. <laughs> And uh, Steffi, thank you very much for inviting us. It is the worst possible time <laughs> for our conference because all the people are sleeping. It's nap time. <laughs> And at nap time, what can you expect? So I hope that you will uh, wake them up. Hey! Of course. <laughs> This Yossi, Yossi that's, Vardy, that's who is an amazing uh, story, Yossi. Thank you. Uh, the father of the Israeli tech and startup uh, universe, and also the godfather of DLD. I'm extremely happy to be here at this conference, uh, and um, uh, Steffi has a little bit exaggerated regarding VivaTech because VivaTech gather only 124,000 people. Uh, and if you don't know it, it's because uh, I have not done a proper job. Uh, so we, we will uh, do the proper job next time. For the time being, I'm here with two absolutely great unicorns from France, mm -hmm. and they are doing an extraordinary job, and they are having a, a, a success uh, that is quite uh, unique. I will let them speak because I'm not here to speak, but to make them speak a little bit. Romain. Romain Moulin. Romain is a co-founder of Exotech. Romain, can you tell us what Exotech is all about? Exotech is uh, delivering to its customer a robotics warehouse. So you have to imagine if you order online uh, on, uh, let's say, C-discount, uh, not Amazon, an e-commerce player, you order one iPhone and one iPhone protection, you have people which are working in warehouses that can do up to uh, 15 kilometers a day to find this iPhone and this iPhone protection, put them in a box and send it to you. Uh, it's a super difficult job, and uh, our customers are facing labor shortages everywhere on every country, and uh, they have customers on their end that want to be delivered super fast. So what we, what we offer them are uh, robots which are moving in three dimensions all over the warehouse so that the robots are taking the goods to the operator and your operator can work like five times faster and not, he won't have to do kilometers and kilometers every day. So improving the ergonomics of uh, the operation, improving the density of storage. So it's all about performance of the fulfillment center. What it is, it's uh, the 22nd century of warehouses. If you look at the movie showing what it is, it's robots going all over uh, the warehouse, down, up, Uh, vertical, oblique, a any direction, they could move and from they pick the right thing and they put it in a basket. Yeah, so it's an army of robots, uh, up to 500 robots. They can uh, climb on the racking up to the ceiling of the warehouse, and it's all about the controlling this fleet to get the best performance of it. Karim Kadoura. Karim, you are the co-founder of Virtuo. Virtuo is for virtuous being virtuous. When it comes to car, when it comes to solving the problem of the future, you have to look at uh, what Karim is doing, and maybe you can tell us in a few sure. words. I, I love that, and uh, you know, thank you, Maurice, for the kind introduction. Uh, you are a living legend, and we uh, live in France and, and know that for sure. Super happy and humbled uh, to be here. So Virtuo is a, a, uh, your car on demand, right? So uh, we allow users to rent a car 24-7, and have it either delivered to their doorsteps or picked up from 100 locations across 25 cities in six countries uh, across Europe. We're Europe now, for now, and obviously will become a global company. Uh, we just landed in Germany. Uh, we uh, opened Berlin a couple of days ago. We're opening Munich in a couple of weeks. So obviously this is very timely. Uh, so everything functions through an application, uh, and you download a digital encrypted key to unlock your car, do a damage report, So it's fully automated, contactless. Um, you don't interact with anyone. There's no time wasted. Uh, it's car rental at its best, as easy as it gets. Um, and there's no friction, right? So our mission is to 
uh, obviously, uh, you know, free and liberate users from the, the hassles of traditional car rental. Nobody likes to rent a car. It's a, it's a poor experience. But on top of that, we think we can also create the future of car ownership and address one of the biggest, um, you know, problems in the world, as you said. Uh, Ka Karim wanted also to look like a Bavarian. The problem <laughs> is that he has order to a company who is not using the Skypods of uh, Exotech. <laughs> and that's the reason why he had to come like a, uh, like a Frenchman. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, otherwise, for, would for, have for what it means. his knees were absolutely great. Uh, Omar, can you tell us a little bit, why do you think that the German can wait for you and can expect anything from you? I, I, I don't understand, because we are in the country which is probably the best when it comes to automatics, uh, to robots, to automatic mechanics, etc. You are so perfectly right. So what the hell right. are you coming to do here? You are perfectly right, uh, Maurice. We are in the I'm homeland. trying to wake them up. <laughs> we are in the homeland of all of our competitors. We have six or seven competitors, big, uh, uh, big company doing one billion to four billion revenue. Um, these companies have been there for um, 80 years, uh, sometimes 100 years. And this is typically the good German machinery and they did deliver to our customer system that also increase the performance of uh, the operators, the density of storage. Um, so what is the point of difference with the German? Why should they go to you? Because compared to them, we have replaced a lot of hardware, a lot of steel, a lot of wires by software. Um, this army of robots able to go anywhere from anywhere. You have to understand that we produce these robots uh, in Surrey, uh, in the headquarters in Lille, not far from here. We send the robots all over the world, and then our deployment engineer will just configure the system, and the robot will start moving. It means we are not working, or at least not much, on customer side. We don't build the machinery on customer side. We build everything in-house, and then our software drives the robots. So by replacing a lot of software, uh, a lot of hardware by software, it increases a lot the speed of deployment on site, and it increases a lot the flexibility. If the customer comes to us and tells, I need to do 20% more orders per day, we'll say, no problem, we'll add 20% robot. And you add robot in the system, and it increases the performance of the system. On traditional automation, uh, you cannot. You would need to modify completely the machinery and you put the system down for one or two months. So giving the flexibility to the, our customer, that's really the visible part of our system. It means, in fact, Exotech, if you look to the people in R&D, it's 70% uh, software people and 30% hardware people. In traditional competition, it's more 70% hardware and 30% software. So you, you said uh, that uh, you, you are kind of hybrid between <laughs> the French creativity and the German discipline. Okay, can you explain a little bit that? Yeah, of course. Um, in the DNA of the company, there's a kind of uh, uh, schizophrenic uh, brain because we want to have uh, a brain which is very flexible and mathematic, a kind of, uh, I would say, French brain in a, in a sense that uh, our software is the key and if we find, if you really find the right mathematics to send the right robot at the right moment, take the right uh, bin, um, you can really improve and uh, really improve the performance. But on the other side, our systems are critical for each and every customer. And if a system is not delivering, I will probably have a call from the CEO of Uniqlo or Carrefour. So this system needs to be perfect in quality, have industrial quality grade, and that's exactly the German quality, the made in Germany. So that is the other part of our brain, and we play on that, having a flexible and mathematic part and having an industrial quality grade part, and that's what made our success. So it's not only a fake, uh a uh, Bavarian suit, it is something which is real in the DNA of the company. Yeah, yeah, we have, uh, we, mm, tonight, uh, that is the opening party of uh, the offices in uh, Lensut, so 50 kilometers away. Everybody is dressed like that, so they told me, you can go like that, uh, people will be happy, don't worry. Okay, so <laughs> if you sign contract like that, that's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Karim, we are in the city of, um, uh, a, a small car company, you know, BMW. Right. Uh, and we are in the country of Mercedes and VIG. Correct. Uh, Volkswagen, Audi. 
and you believe that you have a solution which is uh, compatible with the country of Europe of cars? Yes. Yeah, you believe so? <laughs> now, it's not enough to say yes. No, 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 no. But I, now, you have to give uh, some uh, so, explanation and to, give, to be convincing. Yeah, so I'll try. Tell so. us a little bit. Uh, Why do you believe that your system can be successful here in Germany? Right, so as I said, uh, we're a, a hybrid company between wanting to get rid of traditional car rental and wanting to reinvent car ownership. There's 4.7 million cars sold, I mean, pre-pandemic in Germany, so that's a lot of cars. That's by far the biggest, largest country in Europe. Uh, the, the company that you've been mentioning, Daimler, BMW, Volkswagen Group, are, you know, uh, we're, we're big customers of them. We're probably one of the biggest uh, Mercedes-Benz buyer in France. We're going to be, uh, you know, probably the biggest in Germany in the next years. So you mean that you have both three cars? So no, the, the, the vision that we have is that there is no reason why living the life that we live, mean, meaning every, basically everything is on demand, that the asset, which are cars, will not happen to be the same way. I mean, I stream everything in my life today. I stream my music, I stream my films, I stream even my groceries now. That's very generational. I think my kids will be the same too. And I think that cars is exactly in the same vein. You'll be pressing on a button, requesting your car to your doorsteps, having it appear when you need it, and it disappear when, it, when you don't. It's as simple as that. It should be ephemeral, and you, sh you shouldn't be having and possessing that car on a 100% basis. That's unsustainable for the planet, inefficient from a financial perspective as well. And so what we're creating is, is what we think the future of car ownership. We call this cars on demand. Uh, and so, you know, if that vision materializes, uh, then therefore we're not producers of cars. And so we need to partner with those car makers. It's obviously the traditional ones. Uh, and there's the new ones, right? All the Chinese car makers coming into the game. I think that's, that's super healthy, and we're super excited about what's happening. But again, the, the market is vast. Uh, there's, I think, uh, you know, when you look at Paris numbers, 500,000 cars in the streets of Paris, shocking number is that 70% of them are used once a month. So that means that the rest of the time, those cars are parked idle in the streets. So something needs to change. Uh, and we think that that's universal. And even though German and Germany is such a beautiful turf for cars, I think generationally speaking, uh, this goes, is going to change. So it's just a matter of time. And I think we're coming in at the right time. So. We have heard from uh, Romain uh, that he has many competitors in Germany uh, and that he will be successful because his performance, uh, the performance of the products are such that uh, Aldi and uh, uh, everyone will come, uh, Metro, etc., and they will buy his product. Uh, tell us about you, the competition that you have here in Germany. So we have uh, two kinds of competitors. We have the traditional car rental company, so uh, a big orange car rental company that everybody knows in the room uh, is obviously waiting for us with the bazooka. Uh, what we do think is that we have different things ahead of them. A, we don't have any legacy structures, right? We don't operate the same way they do. They have retail shops with agents. We have none of that, so we suffer from way less fixed costs than they do. And so we're more agile, and therefore we focus ourselves on providing the best customer experience. The second thing that we have is that we're a tech company first, and then a fleet operator second, and not the other way around. And therefore, because we're a tech company and solving a lot of issues with data and product, uh, we've had um, you know, immense access to capital uh, from investors, but also access to cars which is you know, the, 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 the secret sauce in our business, is that we've managed to strike deals with the main car makers that you've been mentioning. Um, and I think it's a cultural thing. We're obsessive, and I, I just want to really insist on that word, obsessive about the intention that we put on the customer experience end to end. And that takes a lot of thinking. That takes a lot of you know, trust earning from our customers. And we're dead serious about one thing to make a difference, not just on the car rental aspect, because that's an enormous market. It's an $80 billion industry but really on what the future of car ownership is going to look like. So, yeah. We, we all know, and uh, I have been through that, uh, when we started to implement uh, publicis in, in Germany, it, it is uh, very tough for a, a non-German and a non-Anglo-Saxon company to be successful in Germany. Uh, what are, from 
your vantage point of view, uh, the issues that you have to solve in order to be successful in this country? Roma, you want to start? Yeah. Um, well, as I said, we are in the homeland of our competitors, so the issue is to have a name, to be a brand, and uh, to be recognized as delivering uh, better than the competition. Uh, so it means for us there's no choice but building a German team. Uh, they must be German speaking, they must have the culture. And Exotech right now, it's all about building a US culture, building a Japanese culture, building a German culture, close to their customer, but at the same time completely consistent with the culture of that company. This brain I was talking about, I need to translate that into the German team. So um, it's a nice moment because we have hired people from the competition. They come with skills. They come with an extremely good understanding of the market. And you, have kind of, you need to kind of brainwash them to, to get the best of uh, the current, uh, well, the best of the competition, brainwashed with uh, the exotic sauce. Uh, so we are spending a lot of time uh, with them, uh, moving people around from the headquarters in the different business unit to really have this uh, local uh, proximity to the customer, but international consistency and keeping the culture, to me, it's uh, everything. So it's much more easy when you are 50 people or 100 people in uh, just one location, but we are right now 400, we should be 600 at the end of this year. And uh, the people we are hiring are yeah, in Japan, Germany, US, so um, it's all about uh, culture, so it's, I think uh, that will be the key success factor of Exotech in the coming years. Karim? I think it's a combination of, of many things, and we've been, you know, success, successful in all the countries we've been to. So the UK, Spain, Italy, very different from France. And Germany, it's, it's still the same recipe, right? But the, the thing is, Germany hasn't waited for us, right? It's such a competitive space. So we'll have to go head-to-head -to -head with those guys and show our best game. So it's how you actually do even better than the, the last openings. The other thing is, in echoing to what Romain said, you know, localizing your product is super important. You cannot be a French company in Germany. You have to have local people that know how to local market it. Uh, it has to feel genuinely German, or else people are not going to really uh, adopt it. Then you have, you know, attraction of talents. When you're nowhere in Germany, when, when your brand is not established, attracting the best talents is even a bigger challenge than, you know, local companies are doing fantastically well. And I'd say the last piece is attracting customers, right? How do you attract customers where you're nowhere in terms of marketing, nowhere in terms of brand? And so that's going to be a challenge, but we've done that in London, and we're one of the biggest mobility company around there now, so, so we'll try to do even better now. Okay. So you, you have a, an audience which is starting to wake up. Uh, <laughs> what what w would you like to tell them now uh, in order that uh, they believe in your project, uh, for the investors who are in the room that invest in your product, right. in your company, and for the people who have an influence in, uh, with the customers, that uh, they become your spokesperson. I hope so. Go ahead. So I'll offer 50 euros <laughs> to, uh, to anyone who uh, pings me on LinkedIn and tells me about this uh, meeting, and I'll happily show you a promo code to either try it in Berlin or Munich in the next weeks or actually tried across Europe, because we're across Europe now. Uh, so that's the first thing. You're bribing us. Uh, I, I, yes, it, it, it's it is, bribing, uh, it exactly. Is, uh, it is, and, but it's 50 euros, you, you can imagine. Yes, uh, you see. I have, I have a question, can I ask a question? Yes, you see, you can ask uh, a, a question. You are at home here. Because I don't hear it. You suggested that Roman is merging German precision with French creativity. It, what would happen if we will merge German <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't repeat the question. We, we, we are not having any problem with the German audience. Uh, so we, we love you, but we will not repeat the question. That's a good question. When I'm saying it's all about mixing the culture, it's very important to take the best part of each culture, because in the end, if you take the worst part of each culture, you can get in serious trouble, yeah. OK, you, you have heard uh, uh, Romain and you have heard uh, Karim. They are absolutely brilliant. And uh, what they have done and what they are doing is something which will be extremely, extremely successful on both cases. 
They are disrupting markets. On both cases, they are transforming something which is a legacy system everywhere, even when it has been modernized. So I'm sure that uh, you will wish them every success. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Marie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Merci.